Thank you. He said, where are the women? We's here. <laughs> so glad to uh, be here and thank you for allowing me to come here. When I, I watched everybody and they, um, I saw all the creativeness in everybody. There was something creative about everybody. It was really cool look at watching everybody here. I am very full today to be able to come before you and speak. I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I was born in Beaufort, South Carolina, uh, from a culture of what they call Geechees that speak the Gullah language. So with me still, um, I carry my culture in my cooking. Our cooking, we, you know, everyone always thinks Southern black folks uh, fry food. My mother doesn't know how to fry. So we were, it was baked, broil, braised, or stews. We grew up on a lot of stews. One of our main dishes, okra. So I still cook like that today. So I did lima beans and okra, crowder peas, hoppin' john, you know. So there's many different dishes that you probably have never heard of. I was telling somebody this morning, I said, oh, yeah, you know, I always cook smothered fish and grits. They said, smothered fish and grits? I said, that was one of our main meals, and that's how I grew up. And so um, I came to, uh, from South Carolina at a very early age. Uh, I think I was about two years old, came to California. We moved, grew up, got, we lived in a home. I have seven other siblings besides uh, myself. And as I was growing up, my brothers, they played baseball. And baseball was, if you didn't play baseball, there was something wrong with you because that's all we knew was baseball. And my brother played against Tony's team. Every, every championship, it was always the St. Martin Lambs and the Long Beach Cubs. And that was, Tony was on the Cubs, my brother was on the St. Martin Lambs. And I tell you this, so we were rivals. So I used to sit on one side and Tony's family used to sit on the other side. My brother was the catcher and so Tony's dad would always say, come on, Tony, he can't throw you out. And most of the time he couldn't throw my brother out. My brother couldn't throw Tony out. And the one time he threw him out, I just jumped for joy and I just licked my tongue. <laughs> and you know, that was it. And so we began, you know, we, we lived down the street from each other. We grew up together. And um, you know, Tony has always been the same person that he was, that you hear about him, that's who he was. I met Tony, the first time I've ever, I met him personally is we were at John Muir Elementary School. And I remember I was such a tomboy. There are all these boys out here playing kickball. And I came and asked, can I play kickball? And they said, no, most of the boys said no. And then Tony said, no, she could play. And I remembered how much he really cared and how he wanted to share with me to, to play um, kickball. And so time went on, you know, I, uh, we went to high school, we started uh, dating in high school, we went to college together, and the rest is history. And so, you know, growing up with Tony, it was always a wonderful thing because he was a great person. When I say he was a great person, I'm not, what you see in public was him at home. That's who he was. And so I am grateful to have spent the time with that person. I am very grateful. I was married for 35 years. I've known him since I was 10 years old. And so I am grateful that I had the opportunity to spend time with a great person. And so I don't want to keep you, and I know I don't, I don't have that much time, so I want to go into the word abundance, you know. And when she gave me that, uh, that topic, I was like, abundance, boy. When we talk about abundance, uh, me and uh, Courtney was talking this morning, yeah, when we talk about abundance, you know, that our word always comes up in church, you know. You don't see it a lot, uh, they don't talk about it, you know, just naturally, you know. And so I was really kind of really thinking about that word. So I was really thinking about that word and I said, 
how do I describe that word and what do I think of when I think of abundance? When I think of abundance, two words come to mind, to mind for me. That is family and character. I have abundance in family and abundance in character. So when I think, I speak of abundance of family, I speak of fullness, speak of fullness of love, because love covers a multitude. And there's really no boundaries for love at all. Fullness of sharing, fullness of caring, the fullness of kindness, the fullness of being helpers to one another, and the list goes on. You know, growing up with uh, seven other siblings, you know, we didn't have much at all. We didn't have much at all. But we had each other. And we thrived off of each other, you know. And we made the best of what we had. There are times, my dad was a construction worker, and there are times that if you didn't pay the bills, you know, your lights got cut off. And I could remember at times, we would walk around with candles and we were the happiest kids. We never complained. We made uh, the best out of every situation. And as I grew, was growing up, you know, again, we didn't have much. My mom taught us how to sew at 10. And so me, my sister and I, we made our clothes, you know. So when school year came, everybody thought we had a lot because we made our clothes. My mom, all she had to do was buy our shoes and our underclothes. And you know, I think about that as we shared together. We made it work for one another. We had abundance in family. So my family means everything to me, you know. There is nothing that I would not do for my family. You know, as the commonality I think of when me and Tony grew up, together. The commonality is like we both cared about how we presented ourselves to people. And we always wanted to help people and, you know, make sure that everybody was okay. You know, after we, you know, um, I can remember the day we got married and we went on our honeymoon. And I think we were there for like maybe a, maybe a day and a half. And then he got a call and said that, you know, his, from his parents that he needed to come home because he was going to get drafted, you know. And so we came on home off our honeymoon, and I can remember when he, we were sitting in the living room, and all of a sudden we get this call, the San Diego Padres call, drafting him in the third round. And he was very elated, we were happy and stuff, and then like two hours later, the San Diego Clippers call. He got drafted in the 10th round by the San Diego Clippers. So he was drafted by two professional teams on the same day. But what people don't realize, Tony was never a baseball player at first in college. He went to college on a basketball scholarship, not a baseball scholarship. But you know, during that whole time, I learned so much about the person he was, you know. And when we got married, we took in a lot of kids. We had about maybe over 40 kids in our home. And we always talked about, you know, what shall we do? How should we do this? And our main thing was to teach them about their character, how to become good human beings, to be sustainable through life. And so we'd always talk about the abundance of character. and. Tony was all about character. It mattered to him. It mattered to me. So we came up with this thing called the ABCDs. That is the attitude, the behavior, the commun communication, and the discipline. You know, I look at every day, I'm known by my fruits. Whatever my outward man displays or presents, that's who I am. If my fruits are rotten, they will eventually fall off that tree and they can't be eaten. If you don't change how you grow that tree, 
to bear those good fruits, that cycle of growing right fruits will continue. And this is all about where your attitude, your behavior, your communication, your discipline, it comes in. If I have a tree that's bearing good fruits, they become nice and ripe, and I'm ready to pick that fruit off the tree, and I, I can eat that tree. You know, baseball became an avenue for me and Tony to help other people. And, you know, our main goal, again, was to teach them to become solid human beings. Su sustainability started also by me and Tony set an example with living our lives, how we live them, and teaching them about the attitude, the behavior, the communication, and discipline. Our hope was to instill in each child an abundance of character. So when I speak of attitude, for me, it is the initiation of my being. It sets the tone of my outward man. How I present myself to another, and I, I'll, I'll tell you a story. When Tony passed, it was very, very hard for me. I didn't want no one to talk to me. I didn't want you to say anything to me. I had an attitude that wasn't right. And I didn't want you to say anything to me, you know. And so I had to go back, and it took me back to what my husband had le left when he said, keep the family together, finish the work. And part of finishing the work was carrying on, teaching everyone about character. And so I had to bring myself back to that place of the foundation and my attitude had to be correct. Then there was the behavior. So your attitude sometimes shows your behavior. It is the reaction to my attitude, how we connect and engage with people. Your behavior is being watched at all times. You know, being a, a baseball player's wife, star, quote unquote, star. You know, there was a certain way that I had to carry myself because I was representing my husband, you know. And I was re representing myself too. So there was always something that I had to do and a, behavior, a certain behavior that I had to carry out. But you know, there's one thing that I can say, everything works from the inside out. So my behavior, what's in you, it's gonna come out. No, it doesn't matter what you do, it's going to come out. So I'm all about working on the inside, the, something on the inside brings, uh, works on the outside that brings about a chain, change. And so there comes communication. It is the cornerstone of my inward initiation. My thought process, without communication, there's no existence of life's timeline. You know, when we had, I, I think there was a time that we had 12 teenagers at one time. And we always made a point to have family meetings. It was very important. We wanted to know what was going on with you, what kind of problems you were having, how could we solve the problems? Because you know, it's not the problem that counts as the solution. So we would all sit down and have these meetings and we would find out with each child where they were, where their mindset was, how were they feeling, how were they feeling? And you know, my kids, my, I only had two biological kids and those two kids treated every one of those kids like they were their brothers and sisters. I treated them just like they were my children. And I can remember the talks and I'll tell you a, a story. So I remember we had like maybe five boys at one time and Tony said, I wanna sit down and talk to them. And I said, okay, I'm sitting in the kitchen. And all the boys, they're, 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 they're in silence because they, they're afraid. They don't know what Tony's gonna say. And he goes, well, y'all get to the place where y'all dating and everything, and uh, I don't, I'm not pushing it. And you know, I know what mother nature does and I know what we do when it comes down. He said, I hope everybody's using their jimmy caps. <laughs> 
and they all, everybody, they froze. He said, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He said, I, I want to know. He said, because if you're not, you need to tell me. He said, <laughs> and I will never forget, he sent Charlotte, our assistant, down to Costco. She came back with these big old box, <laughs> big old box of uh, Jimmy Caps. That's what I'm going to go. <laughs> And he was, they, it, it was just so funny because they were all looking like, trying to pretend like, oh, I don't, I don't need them, I don't need them, I don't need them. But each time I would pass that box, <laughs> you could see they was going little by little. And I, I, you know, I just smiled, you know, because, you know, we can pretend if we want to, like those things don't happen, you know, but, we were realistic about it. We knew young people, you know. Now, I grew up a different way because I grew up in church. My mom and dad were elders of the church. And that was the greatest thing about Tony Gwynn because he could wait. He didn't mind. He could wait. And I was like, oh, you know, we can't. Mm, OK, yeah, OK. <laughs> and he said, Leash, that's OK. That's OK. And that's why I was so grateful for him because we know as women, most men, mm-mm, they not, most boys, uh-uh. So that was the discipline part of them. So when I talk about discipline, the habit that is formed, a structured plan, if I practice the same thing every day, it's gonna become a part of me, no matter what you say or what you do. I, every day I get up and I walk five miles a day. And if I decide that I don't want to do it, I don't feel right. So I get up. See, I used to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm out the door at 4.30 in the morning. I walk my five miles. I come back. I do my CrossFit, OK? But if I don't do it, I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> if I don't do it in that morning, it always winds up me doing so habit forming you know disciplining yourself and this is what we wanted to dis make sure that they were disciplined you know make sure that they knew how to be uh, do things the right way that was all what tony was he's do things the right way that's what we taught them you know make sure your attitude is intact make sure you are carrying the right behavior at all, all times and i always teach everybody to communicate you know this is sad, but we have a lot of mental, there's a lot of mental crisis going on, you guys. And it was, it's, a lot of it is because we do not communicate because everybody's afraid to tell this one and that one. We have to be open to hear one another. If we don't, it's a sad thing. We have to be open to one another. And this is why I love this group. It's, it's creative. You know, I watched everybody walk in here and I was like, wow, you know, this is really cool. I was telling Courtney, this is really cool. And so, you know, I love being creative, but I also love part of my cr creative character is the attitude, my behavior, communication, and discipline. You know, there's so many things that I love to uh, talk about. You know, um, I was thinking, you know, that if we would only govern ourselves to who we really are, our authentic selves, would, the world would be a better place. We're so externally driven that we forgot our being. We forgot our inner man. And so we don't even tap into that because we look at everything that's going on and we try to take on that. That's not the right thing to do. When you have abundance of character, and for me, it's about my family. I have two children. I have seven grandchildren. And every day, they are a part of my life. And that's why I'm so full in abundance, because they have become part of my life. And I'm able to teach them about uh, so many different things. I would like to leave with you something that 
I wrote. I wrote a book called Practical Principles of Character Building. And when I wrote this book, it was really who I was. And I thought about the abundance of character is the foundation of sustainable life driven with creativity. It allows you to move with intention to make decisions from a place of value and from the heart. There is nothing like when you speak from the heart. It is authentic, it is being yourself. If everybody could be themselves, I'm telling you, this would be a better world. But we have to learn to accept each other. We have to learn to accept who we are. No matter whether you like it or not, I always tell people, if you like it, I love it. And that's how that works. It allows you to show up as a full human being, not just a, an artist, not just a baseball player, not just a good parent, but as a good person. Every part of creativity has to be rooted in character. It becomes the foundation of your being. And when you lose your way, sometimes when you had that foundation laid, no matter how much you stray away, no how much you walk away, you always are gonna come back to the thing that help you get where you are, and that is your foundation. And so I'm gonna read to you and leave you with this. It's my creed. It's called the creed of life. What you see is what you get, but you ain't seen nothing yet. My heart is fixed, my mind made up. My soul now drinks from this cup. Please don't change me, but only enhance. When you help me, it gives me a chance. My character is strong from within. When I move forward, it's only a win. If I fail, it's only a mistake. Don't be alarmed, my character is straight. The ups and downs will be part of me. My character remains, you will see. I am me, so let me be. So you know, and you've been told, it's just me, my character made whole. Now that I am complete within, my outside character becomes my twin. Now I could give you that respect. If you don't, I could accept. I am me, so I could deal. Now you know my character is real. I've learned to be patient. I've learned to care. Working with others, I love to share. It comes from within, can't you see? The love that shows, it's just me. You think I'm weak? yet I'm strong. You just can't see, you're not wrong. When you notice and rise above, it's just my character that shows you love. So give the respect where it's due. Though I'm a child, I deserve like you. My feet are still planted, very firm. The character in me has made me learn. Though I may stumble, though I may fall, the character in me will rise tall. I won't get discouraged from the bumps in the road. The character in me can bear the load. I see no color, race, or creed. The love in my character, yes, indeed. Working together, a goal to reach, building a community we then can teach. Don't disrupt my state of mind. Just jump on board the path you'll find. Together we stand, divided we fall. Our characters together become as all. Whether we're rich, moderate, or poor, the character in me discriminates no more. The characters we build become unity, inclusive as all, the community. Now I'm complete, it's time to share by helping others because I care. My heart and mind feeds my soul. Remember my character, it's made whole. So I will leave you with that. And I wanna share something with you. During this time of the year, 
it's very, very tough for me. Very, very tough, very hard because this was my husband's favorite time of the season. And I thought about not coming, but I said, no, I have to do this. I got a call yesterday, and those of you who know baseball know about Hank Aaron. His wife called me yesterday. And as down as I was feeling, I needed to share with her. She lost Hank last year. And she asked me, does it get easy? I said, I don't know if it get easy, but you learn how to cope. But what I'm trying to share with you is, I had to share in a time when I was feeling not so good. But I shared with her my feelings, my thoughts, and how it is when you lose someone. When you've lost your soulmate, it's just something hard to do. And I just wanted to share that with you that, you know, no matter what state we're in, sometimes we have to rise above and help others. So I hope someone has really gained a thought from what I spoke from. Thank you.